Yo, welcome. We need to do a cribs, a cribs uh, tour still here out in my neighborhood. Check out the view though. This, we got trails galore. We got hiking galore. We got biking galore, which is good because I am doing the triathlon, which is what we're gonna be talking about right now, the running aspect of things. So I hate running. I've done a half marathon before. Running is gonna be probably, the swimming is gonna be the hardest thing for me, but running is what I'm looking forward to the least out of all the training, which is why we're here now with Chris from Ultra Running. What do you got in your hand there? This is the new TM Trail Shoe. It's pretty sick. So just wanted to give like a quick rundown. It's funny because if you go to a gym, like a good gym, they teach you how to deadlift, they teach you how to squat. They don't just throw a bunch of weight on you and say, okay, go for it. In running, you buy shoes and you just go for a run. Like no one teaches you how to run. If you ran track in high school or if you've done some of the track and field stuff, you may have got a little bit of instruction, but you don't, you don't get a crash course on how to run. And so a lot of the things that, a lot of the things that Steve, that you would do in a sprint, that you would do in football would be a little bit better. But for this, like you definitely want to, uh, you definitely want to change the way you run for long distance to just take some ease off your joints. So Steve and, Steve and Scott, we're gonna do a little experiment. So I want you guys straight leg to jump and land straight on your heels with lock legs. Straight on your heels with lock legs? Yeah, tell me how it feels. Oh, that's a lot of It hurts, right? Yeah. <laughs> so when you're running and you do a full stride, that's basically what you're doing for six miles, 10 miles, whatever you're doing. And so... When you land on your heels, you mean? You have your heels. So when you're straight leg, check mark is that we call it. Like, that's a lot of impact. Yeah. I'm so, 230 right now. It's a lot of impact. A lot of impact. So boxers, where do boxers get injured? Hands, shoulders, right? Because shoulders, they hit, but this is what takes all yep. of them. So when you're running, boom, boom, every time. Okay. And so you want to, you want to land with a bent knee. So early on, a couple brands, they started making raised heels and running shoes because everyone was landing like this. So what do you want to land on? You want to land in one inch of foam or a three foot spring. Gotcha. So you have this spring. natural spring already. We just have to be able to use it. And so shortening your cadence when you're running, a little shorter cadence, a little, a little more spring, and it gets you off that check mark. Gotcha. And the way that you change, you don't want to go out and go for a run and concentrate, just like, okay, I have to hit midfoot, have to hit midfoot. That's a result of what you're doing in your upper body. So when you run, you want to lead with your chest, chest out, and you want to pretend like your belt buckle's pulling you. And so that's that's what's getting your rotation. And then how about your breathing? I always hear about like different breathing techniques when you're running. Like, right. In terms Entry of like nose, diaphragm or... breathing, like yeah, right. like, this might sound simple, but when you go into the gym for the first time, you'd be amazed how many people don't know how to breathe. You know, they're holding their breath. So I want to make sure running, you know, is it or is it, you know, it kind of it kind of depends on like what you like. Some people, me personally, I'll go for a run and I, I breathe in when I land and then breathe out and it's over like two strides. Okay. So I just try to slow it down. Gotcha. Um, definitely, just like with cycling, you wanna use all of your lungs, start in your stomach and fill up your lungs, get as much oxygen in there as possible. But it's kind of a personal thing. Good some time. guys like a little more quick breath, some of them like longer ones. Okay. So most shoes, they have a tapered toe box. Yep. And so you're always just jamming your foot. Like your foot should be like this. This is the best performance, this is the most comfort, this is the best injury-free, natural, free, natural yeah. way to be. This is when you wake up in the morning, that's what your foot looks like. And then you jam it into a shoe all day. It does nothing to mess with your joints, mess with your bones, it's just a mess. And so Ultra, that was kind of our foundation is this foot-shaped toe box. And when you allow your foot display, you have more performance, more traction. It's just, it's a better running experience. All right. And so we're all about making the run better because running sucks. Before I came to Ultra, I hated running. I've done triathlons. I look back at some of the old pictures. My form was garbage. Really? I hated running because it hurt. And so as you as you do your form, use your legs better, you become a better runner. It's not as harsh. I'm looking forward to becoming a better runner. I need that. I need help in all of this. And that's why we do it because you can't just do things you're good at. That's not what life's about. Life's about getting out of that comfort zone. That's what we're doing. Learning, learning, learning as we go and then starting out crappy at something 
finishing being the least proficient at it. So maybe not the best in the world. I'm never gonna be the best runner in the world. I don't have the body type. I'm not a Kenyan, I'm not Ethiopian. I'm not gonna have that amazing running body. But from where I am now to where I wanna be, there's a whole lot of improvement that can happen. Switch. Should we do some running? Let's do it. That's good. Like, hands are good. You want to pretend like you have a potato chip in your hand? That's how always I, you know, grew up running. I was this. Right. I was so competitive. My parents showed me a, like I was like five doing sprints, like in the kids' track meets, freaking cutting across lanes. It's like, <laughs> nope, not today. <laughs> Super efficient. All I know, those, those Kenyans, when they run, like, or like, you see anyone with a good like. It just looks effortless. It looks like yeah. they're floating. There's no wasted energy at all. Everything is just moving forward. Bo Jackson, when that dude ran, it looked effortless. And he was like hauling. Yeah. Are you hey, toes in first? It mostly midfoot. Like you don't want to be up on your toes. That's good. To get Proficient enough at running that next year, New York Marathon. Write Ooh. it down. Drawing, throwing that out there? Throwing that out there. 26.2. New York Marathon. If I'm ever going to do a marathon, it's going to be New York. It's not an easy course either. No? It's a good course. <laughs> no. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> it's not an easy course? All right. Now that we have our, our running somewhat down, the only way to get better at it is by doing it. We're going to go over here. Nothing easy about this. Time to put those running tips to use here and do a little, I'd much rather run in the mountains because running in the mountains, you get views like this. So we're gonna do probably like a little three miler tonight. Um, I did drag up the one, the only, the vanilla grill. That's a really color, cool color shirt you got there. It's blue. It is my color. It's yeah. blue. Um, but yeah, we're gonna do a little little jogging, maybe it's a soft yay, maybe the J is jogging. It's apparently where you just run for fun. Why did I sign up for this? We got a month, month until this triathlon, and Jake's doing it with me. Am I? You are. Do Jake's doing it, <clears throat> we're doing it. All right, let's go. sucks there's no other way around it you just gotta do it we didn't make it all the way up here though that is the one good thing the view and I'm not gonna lie getting outside is much better than doing cardio in the gym but you guys already knew that let's go back down the key to downhill running is you don't want to sit back like this on the heels you want to be able to take long strides and uh, just attack the downhill. even sped up. Oh. Just keep, just keep going. When I run, you know I'm just getting like a, a meditative state. Sorry for the bumpiness. Sorry, not sorry. Spaceships on my socks. I'm envisioning, I'm envisioning being fast as hell for this race. All right, yeah, let's go find the house. What's the battery like, 47%? We're good, right? It's playing with fire. It's because to get back has to fly against the wind. How long does that thing fly? Uh, Depending on 20, the mode. 20, 25 minutes and we've been going for like 15. 
Dude, it takes a while to get over there, though. It does. Shit. So, the house is right over here. Face. <laughs> a champ. When I was in New York, when I was in New York, a drone ran into a helicopter, an Apache helicopter on Long Island, and they were trying. They had to land because of damage to the helicopter. They said it had a couple scratches in it, but it was because the UN was there. It was freaking out. Practicing that good forward lean, right onto my face. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I've gotten in a good enough run when we start as the sun's setting and then it's almost completely black. It's at least 20 minutes, okay? We ran 90% of the way. We got one more hill before we're home. One more uphill and that's usually how it is. People want to quit right before they get this to the end of something. Right before they have this, some big breakthrough, some big great success, things are gonna get harder and you're gonna wanna quit. You come 90%, 99% of the way, and you have this one last obstacle to get over. What do you do? Most people are gonna quit. Not us, not you. We're gonna run this thing because that's what we do. It's gonna suck. You're gonna hate it but it'll be worth it. Oh, so bad. All right guys, so what we're doing now, uh, we've been working on a three day a week program. That was one of the requests we were getting from a lot of people. I'm all sweaty from the run still, but I wanted to show you guys how I wanna be utilizing, we are gonna be utilizing a three day a week training split with the weights to make sure we're getting stronger while I'm training for the sprint triathlon. Sprint triathlon, not super duper long. It's a 750 meter swim. It's a 12 mile bike and a 5K run, which is like 3.1 miles. Um, so we're gonna incorporate more cardio, more mobility routines, more recovery stuff, and then three days a week hitting it hard. So setting up the next month really for goals. So I've been having this triathlon on my calendar for a while. Um, I backed out of the one that's actually this week because I jacked up my lower back doing the bull riding and I'm not gonna lie, moving, super stressful too, but it didn't mean I'm saying no to it. So we now have, it's just a sprint, nothing too hard, but this, we kind of wanted to roll out. Jake's been programming a three day week split for those people that are really busy. You might have a newborn baby, you might be super busy at work, but you still want to make progress during the week, even if you have three days training. So the big, the big program, the lean program, all of those are great, but they're very time intensive. This is time intensive as well because we're actually gonna be adding in those off days. So it's a Monday, Wednesday, Friday split, or you can do a Tuesday, any three days of the week, try to space them out appropriately. We're filling those in between days actually with triathlon work. So endurance bikes, endurance swims, endurance runs. Um, and then trying to actually get stronger, not necessarily bigger. I'm not going to actually probably gain any size. I'll probably lose some size. I'm trying to maintain strength. Um, so kind of the programming that we've set up is Monday dynamic. It's a dynamic day. And Jake, when you say dynamic, you're talking about what speed work? Just move fast. Yeah. Example, like, like, so for, Monday that we we have it set up here is going to be a dynamic upper body day. So something there. Usually everything that we do just to be more efficient in the gym is going to be supersetted. So we probably superset a speed bench with a pin lay row, do like five sets of three, just knock it out, get it done, and then move on to the lower body strength work. So we're putting lower body strength the Monday at the beginning of the week just to put an emphasis on it. We get a we get a rest day on Sunday, and that's probably going to be the most like intensive workout yeah. of the week and so we're putting it on Monday. That lower body strength, heavy compound movements, unilateral work. So we're gonna be doing a lot of like single pit pistol squats with dumbbells, single leg RDLs, things that are going to really hammer the legs. And then also we got hit right after. Right after or maybe later on in the day we'll come back. Hit work can be sled, can be row. We're doing ten to twelve ten to twenty minutes of that. So this is this this 
cardio workouts, get in, smash it, get out. If you're just starting with cardio, 10 minutes is gonna be more than enough. And again, we're, we're not putting on here stretch, but there's always that aspect of foam rolling and stretching out. Tuesday, that's gonna be our endurance day. I'm gonna choose bike, typically on Tuesdays. Um, just cause, you know what, bike, I might be switching it up between Saturdays and Tuesdays. I wanna do those days um, longer distance stuff. So when we're talking bike, 10 to 25 miles, that's gonna put us anywhere between a half hour and probably 45 minutes to an hour. Plus there's a lot of taint pain, so you gotta have at least a week between Oh the my gosh, there's so much taint pain. I jumped on my bike today after the, after the last video, we biked 20 miles. Never been on a bike before, road bike. Oh, it'll, your taint will be fine, they said. Not today. I even used, <laughs> I even I have some stuff called uh, D's nuts you put on your taint. Oh, really? I feel like that's an appropriate word because it was on the package, I mean, the I word taint. I like a taint rash. No, I said just taint, sore. Yeah. No, but I don't think I don't think it's a taint rash thing that it is. You'd what think it would be like taint chafing, but... Why would you put it on there then? I don't know. you got to get one of those, like the padded underwear. Maybe, I think it you just... those? Yeah. No, I didn't have those. I was going to shred. I just get seat. super... I get a su super sensitive taint. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then uh, one thing Jake and I both need to do because we travel a lot and uh, <laughs> making sure more yoga mobility. Jake can actually do the splits, so I need to get on his level. Plus, I can, I've been getting hurt quite a bit this year, and what it is is a lot of plane stuff, a lot of sitting on planes, a lot of traveling, kind of catching up with me, so uh, I'm gonna be seeing physical therapists, chiropractors these days, keeping healthy, icing, you know, cold tub if I'm super, super sore. Maybe if my taint's super sore, I'll, I'll ice that a little bit. Um, Cow will ice it for you. <laughs> <laughs> and then we got- uh, Those like, those ice cups and football. And football, the Gatorade yeah, cups. <laughs> <laughs> So how does this work? You just have to like bend over and I'll get to do that. Like the, I'll be like baby pose, you know, in yoga. Oh, so okay. Go over his head, grab yep. his feet. And I was kind of hoping he'd like. Stay, you know, you can get that one yeah. too. Uh, <laughs> I just painted a real gravity trick. <laughs> wow. Uh, Wednesday, upper body strength. So um, we always, if we're doing a dynamic day, that always comes first. This day is upper body strength. Um, so again, that's going to be similar to compound unilateral work. That's where we're gonna get heavy with you know bench, single arm, dumbbell bench, things like that. Um, and then we have a lower body endurance day. We're gonna bump those reps up, triceps, higher reps, go, go, go. And then finish off with an IWT, interval weight training session. So um, that's gonna be, Jake, what would be a good example of that? Um, a good example of that would just be like, the way that we're probably gonna use it. Uh -huh. It's like a high volume lifting set. Uh, like maybe like a set of 15 deadlifts yep. and then get on a rower for two minutes and go all out for two minutes, try to get like over two or over 600 meters on the rower and then rest for a full two minutes. And then the goal is just to like maintain your output through like three to five sets. And I like doing that kind of stuff when I'm trying to lean down a lot because it takes it out of you, but you're it's also crazy. still, yeah, it tears you up, but what you're, you're also using, it's like you're moving weights and endurance, it's the best both worlds. Plus both it's worlds. like, you're doing a two minute, well, like a two minute and 30 second interval and then right. resting for two minutes and you're just going all out, as opposed to like sitting on a fucking, I'm oh, sorry, sitting, <laughs> on, sitting on a treadmill right. for an hour or something, you know? It's, it's much just like better. You, way more bang for your buck and it's, I mean, this, that kind of interval is hard to do if you're just running or something, except unless you're running like an 800. Right. And that's just, that so, gets old too, you know? So it's just like another way to change it up and do cardio where it's, has a super big impact on the rest of the day. So like, it has a big impact on the, your oxygen consumption for the entire day, which is actually gonna have a huge impact on your right. physique, you know what I mean? So. And I think this is probably one of the most underutilized things in bodybuilding. Everyone always thinks you have your weight training and then you have your cardio, walking on a treadmill or lifting. There ain't no reason why you can't do both and have just gains to the max, bro. Um, okay, Thursday, endurance day, swim. This day is gonna be a little bit more skill oriented at the first part, and then we're gonna probably do like a half hour of just you know trying to trying to build some endurance in the pool. This is the day that I'm most worried about because I suck at swimming. Um, yoga mobility work. I know when I do a lot of swimming, the shoulders start. You know, I, I don't pull right. So anyhow, got I got to work on that personally. Friday, lower body dynamic day. We're talking explosive. We're talking cycle jumps. We're talking dumbbell plyos, speed day with like speed squats and whatnot, um, upper body endurance after that, higher reps, tri sets again, 
and then metabolic conditioning, 10 to 20 minutes, get in, get out. Um, and so that, that you know, you, you see that there's a lot of different moving parts to this, but really workout, workout with some, some uh, form of cardio afterwards. And then that Saturday, depending on when we do the bike, we'll uh, do the long run, which I hate. I'm dreading, so I'm hoping like Saturdays we can go out to some place nice and like, yo, run with the view, make it fun because I hate running, bro. And then some mobility work. Big thing here is gonna be mobility work, um, staying healthy. The key is to stay healthy. I, I realize that yeah, it's easy to do all this stuff, but what happens, like if you're just trying to do it all, you're gonna end up getting hurt if you're not working on that mobility. That's basically why we spelled out like this, right? Yeah. Because we talked about it recently and it's just like, these things, the mobility, we're you're adding those on top of all these other days. It's Doesn't just too much up. to fit in and then it's the last thing you, it's the first thing you throw out, you know? And so, this is a good way to attack it if you want to get more mobile, you want to maintain your strength and get your endurance up. And there's a lot of people out there that don't want to be bodybuilders. And there's a lot of people out there that, like even seeing people in New York that want to be, like they go to all these different classes to get like all of this type of stuff in. And you can be doing it on your own. You don't need to go to like five different classes. You can, you know, program like this or you could have us program for you guys. We're going to be rolling this out here probably in, in January. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, it'll be coming out in January with all of our other programs that we're going to be coming out with the app. It's going to be super duper exciting. So we're going to be following this for the next month and then come race day, I'm looking to be about 215. I weighed 222 this morning. I'm looking to be about 215 <coughs> come race day. Would that work? Yeah. It's about seven pounds in four weeks. What do we have in one yeah. So I'm like 243 and I'm gonna try to be 230. Deal. We both got 12 pounds. Are you pounds. really gonna just jump in and do this? Yeah. Fuck yeah. Relax. Animal. Relax. Animal. Uh, so yeah, that's the deal. And I'm gonna be 7% body fat. Let's do it. Game over. Thanks for guys. Guys, again, thank you guys for watching this. If you can, give the thumbs up. I always feel like, I always feel like, you know, I never say that to people and unless I remind people, maybe they don't. Subscribe, like, we're gonna get this to, to two, uh, or to two million, I wish, to one million and keep this train rolling. Now that we're in St. George, we're gonna have the gym opening up soon. We're gonna be doing a lot more, a lot more. Educational content. <sighs> he said it, it's gonna happen, it's gonna be great.